Hey, what's up you guys? My name is Melanie and I'm gonna share a little stories. I'm gonna share a little, I'm, howdy. My name's Melanie. Oh, fuck. I don't know if my camera's working. I just, I have it. It's new. Um, this is my new camera. I'm gonna be talking about some of my crazy foster care stories. The time has come. If you didn't watch my video before about me being in foster care when I was 17, the video is below. I was 17 when I was taken into foster care and I was taken into a mental hospital, which if you have not been to a mental hospital, I don't recommend it. I went and I met this young woman. She had epilepsy, which if you don't know what epilepsy is, Basically, it sucks. This girl, <laughs> probably my first or second day in foster care, and I'm sitting at, l at the lunch tables. Me and this girl are having a conversation. I don't remember what about. And <laughs> stops talking all of a sudden. And she like, her eyes roll in the back of her head. She cracks her head open, she falls down, and we're all, all, we're all told to like get up and like leave the area as fast as possible. And I remember being like, or what and the only reason that I was defensive against the nurses and like the people in charge were they would make fun of this girl because she had to wear a helmet I don't know what's funny or what would be funny about someone having to wear a helmet because they have seizures that are triggered this poor girl cracks her head open in front of my eyes like I am watching this happen okay I'm I'm one probably one foot away from this stuff she had a seizure in front of me at least three times. Obviously the first time happened in the hospital and second time. I remember that me and this young woman were going to be placed in the same house. I don't even know how to explain it. <laughs> like we were in the men's hospital and then we were placed um, in a placement house for the weekend. And then we also went to another house for a week. So I knew her for a while. I was in my second placement house and we were having a conversation in our room and she just stops talking again and then falls back like a ton of bricks straight up just there was like hardwood floor and I, I remember that clearly but she just like that and I was like damn where is your helmet girl like but she didn't like to wear her helmet because people made fun of her and I understand but it's not fair. The third seizure happened when we were at my third placement house. It was stressful to me <laughs> because I was not, I didn't have a chance to deal with my own stuff. And I guess that's like who I am. I just put, I want to deal with everyone else's problems so I don't have to deal with my own problems. <laughs> okay. I was living with a foster family for months and <laughs> I don't like to talk about this. I'm just gonna get to the point. Basically, um, my foster dad was inappropriate with me and it was decided between the group that I should be placed in a different house. Listen, I'm not telling this story to like expose someone or make someone feel bad about themselves or bring up the past or anything like that. This is important to share that my foster dad was inappropriate with me because it makes me who I am. It, it like, you know, has changed me and made me a, a different person. <laughs> I was transferred to another house, like I said, and that house was so much fun. The first day there I go, um, it's snowing. It was Christmas Eve <laughs> and foster mom was showing me where my bed's at. And I remember, you know, putting my, my suitcase down. I remember you know, pulling my bed out from underneath this other bed because it was like, you know, a bed and then it was a pull-up bed underneath like on the floor, you know. The only time I complained is when there was actual piss, okay? Actual living, breathing, warm pee <laughs> on my bed that I was supposed to sleep on. Let me explain. Remember when I told you that there was a bed and then it was a pull-out bed, okay? That's important information because the girl that slept on top of this bed 
would wet the bed every night. Now, I don't know what her, what things that she went through as a child or what her backstory was. I just wasn't ready for it. Like, I'm not complaining that I had to sleep on a pissy bed for weeks. I'm just saying, like, <laughs> I freaked the fuck out. I was not a happy camper, but I, you know, didn't have another bed. There was literally kids sleeping on top of each other, like, bunk bed, bunk bed, bunk bed, like, sleeping on the floor, like, seriously, like, it was, a, it was at least, like, 12 little girls sleeping in one room, and I'm like, it was not a big room, I never had my own room as growing up, so I wasn't, like, complaining about that, I'm just saying, like, drugs are bad, don't do drugs, don't do them. I'm with another foster girl at the time and she is fluent in Spanish. Okay, we're having a conversation about like her life and all these like super intense emotional things and I just remember listening to her and just you know looking at my surroundings and thinking how the fuck did I get here? But I knew she was fluent in Spanish and I remember walking down this freaking ghetto ass fucking neighborhood and when I say ghetto, I grew up in California and um I don't I grew up in um, an all right neighborhood, I guess. I don't know. Like, I and we see these fucking guys, like three guys, and they're all holding beers and they're smoking, and they're like, "Hola!" I was like, "Hey, do you know these guys?" And she was like, mm, "No." And I was like, "Okay, like, let's just keep walking." <laughs> and this girl's like, "You know what? Fuck it. Like, let's see what they want." And I was like, "You know what? I'll go with you because you seem like you know." what's the right thing to do like you are you know you know you know you know this girl this girl has seen some shit and she's done some shit and i felt like she was gonna protect me you know against like these dudes all i remember is walking into this this stranger's house and they're like <laughs> they got this puerto rican flag in their living room and that was all they had up that's all they fucking had they had no furniture they had a cooler with their fucking corona they were like we're they said we're moving tomorrow and the girl translated it for me actually so I remember asking her to ask them for if they had a phone or something like that and she asked them and they were, they were like why so you can steal it and I was like listen lady if I wanted to steal your shit I would have already done it but you have nothing you have a fucking Puerto Rican flag and some weed and they gave me this phone and I remember being like this is in Spanish <laughs> I was like mom I love you. Foster care is cool. Everything's cool. I don't recommend going into strangers' houses. Um, but I didn't get caught. Nothing happened to me, so do as you wish. So this story, uh -huh. basically my life is like a warning. And I want you to watch these videos and think, this is what I don't want to do with my life. Okay? Like, I was lucky enough to be invited on a trip with my foster parents to go to Lake of the Ozarks which if you haven't gone it's not it's all right I'm just kidding Lake of the Ozarks is beautiful um it was my first time down there and I was really freaking happy it was me my foster dad at the time and some other foster girl and <laughs> we were driving in his truck okay we started talking about like drinking and alcohol and stuff but um, <laughs> we went to the liquor store and he bought me some little limeritas and I got so drunk that I don't really remember the details and all I remember is just drinking, like chugging a limerita as fast as I possibly could and then throwing it out the window. Like, <sighs> one thing you should know about me is I hate littering. I despise when people litter. It is the biggest turnoff for me. It's disgusting. When we got to the villa at the Lake of the Ozarks, my foster mom was like, you guys are so fucking late and you are so fucking drunk. <laughs> like, what did you guys do? And I just remember being like, uh, I don't even know what you're talking about. I don't even, I've never even drank alcohol before in my damn life. Like, <laughs> looking back on it, alcohol's bad. Don't do alcohol. Don't drink. Don't do drugs. Stuff's bad for you. This last story, 
um, is pretty sad and I don't have any extra content to like explain what was going on in my life around this time. I was in foster care clearly. So like my clothes and my jewelry and crap, I was able to have it and leave it at the DCF office. Imagine like a little freaking cart, okay? This little cart. And there is bags and boxes of crap, okay? And it just, it's literally just in an office. There is nothing else that's like that in that office. They're all in like the basement, but they didn't put my stuff in the basement. I don't know why they didn't, but they didn't, okay? And come to find out that they were just fucking giving out my shit to whoever wanted it. I had nothing. All my stuff was stolen, give it away. Um, it wasn't like some let go shit either. Like I didn't get any money for that shit. All, everything that I own was gone, taken from me because they didn't know how to, they couldn't get their shit together. They still don't have their shit together. Fuck the state. I'm fucking still fucking pissed at you. Nah, like it wasn't like, it was all my stuff, but like I'm over. It's been years. <laughs> it's the principle of it. You guys enjoyed some of my, uh, foster care nightmare stories. Um, it wasn't all bad. I met a lot of cool people. Um, I have a lot of cool experiences. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Um, comment down below so I know. Um, subscribe to my channel. Um, I have a camera now, so there's gonna be a lot more content. <sighs> yeah.